right, so if we can get cool here with Rachel Gordon. How you doing tonight, Rachel? Well, I'm do kind of doing the same as I was doing, you know, the other night. Um, trying to trying to hang on and trying to hold hold on. Now, ever since we did that interview, there's been a lot of controversy going on. There's all kinds of fans saying all kinds of things yeah, about you. You know what? Everybody's chonies are in a bunch, and you got like you got people, you got fans left and right, and everybody's you know. There's some people that are that understand it and know it, which I get a lot. Of, I don't know about you, but I get a lot of letters from people telling me, "Yeah, get this and get this and get this and listen to this," and I believe you and. You know, I get a lot of really, really nice fans out there and um, Aces fans that are very sweet and understanding about it. Uh, most people understand uh, about them. And it's not, you know, what I want to tell the fans right now is, um, you know, what is, is, is Kiss afraid that, that I'm tarnishing their good name, their good fucking names? You know what? I'm sick of it because I'm... I'm Come and get it, you guys. I'm suing you. Come, come, come make my fucking day. I'm sitting in a hotel room without a cent after 12 years with Ace Freely. Not a cent. I got thrown out of my house by police officers. I've been, it was complete, it's looking completely rigged and everything. I, he, he walked out the door after 12 years and I have nothing. And all of a sudden, every single thing in my, is expired and my license and I, I have nothing. So you're not afraid of like any... They're trying to, like, erase me. Yeah, they're definitely trying to erase you. I mean, from what I'm seeing, like I said, the comments I, that I've seen so far, that a lot of people are, are questioning the credibility of your statements. A lot of people are uh, thinking that you're going to really? get sued that's... by KISS. Yeah. That's funny. Questioning. Yeah, I know. How weird. How really weird for me to think that... Um, for me to, For me to think... All the different. I I must be just making everything up, right? I just it, all that just came right off the top of my head, you know. And I'm just, you know, what, I'm just dreaming about um about Gene Simmons doing what he did to me. What in the hell is that all about? You know, he did what he did, and people, it's you know what? Listen, it happens every day, and it happens all over. It happens in the entertainment entertainment industry every single day with women and men of all ages and it is covered up and it is hidden. And this is an unspoken sickening reality. And I just happen to be brave enough to come out and say exactly what happened and what I've seen and what I've heard. And if they don't dig it, Hey, you know what? They can, they can kiss my ass. They can no. kiss my ass right now. I, I, hotel with, with are, nothing. They are you kiss my ass? Are you afraid of any, uh, defamation or slander lawsuits coming your way? Slander about Kiss? Oh, yeah, you're slander. Hey, Rachel, you know, um, you're slandering Kiss. You're slandering uh, Kiss's good names. Slandering those wonderful guys that never did anything. Yeah. No, not quite. No, I'm not afraid of that at all. Nope. I'm, you know what? I can't, I can't be afraid of what is the truth. I'm not going to sit here and be afraid of telling the truth about something gross that I've seen and something horrible that happened to me, something unspeakable that I've been through. I am not going to lie and not tell the truth about those things, you know? Now, it uh, kind of seems like Ace has thrown some things in your face lately with interviews that he's been doing, mentioning... Uh... It's real, you know what? It's really, really, really childish and, you know... Everybody can see that. It's very obvious. Come on. What, what rock star in the world, in the world, in the history of rock and roll, okay, in the history of rock and roll, when have you known of a rock star, I don't care who it is, um, and, you know, we all know what, what goes on and everything, but in the press, I don't care if they've been with a woman for a year, two years, five years, or as long as I was with Ace. But what rock star goes forward and goes out of his way to just to just destroy the woman that he's been with? Inseparable. Now, I was with Ace uh, more hours of the day than any woman could ever be with a man. When we went to bed at night to 
you know, and we were watching a movie and we were just sitting there. He would have a death grip on my hand like I was going to run. You know, I, I mean, I, I love Dave and that's why I stayed with him. And I'm, you know, I, I can't, I'm always going to love Ace, okay? But the thing is that I got treated like, like a, like a stooge and like a slave and, and, and discarded. And I'm, I'm being bullied. I was threatened. I'm not going to lie about any of that stuff. I'm not going to lie about anything. But especially the really, really bad things that happened to me. And especially Gene put his hands on me. There's no way I'm going to, I'm going to candy coat that crap. Because it needs, you know why I'm not going to? Because it needs to stop. You see, the one thing I want to bring up is like a lot of the comments that we're seeing is people saying that you're saying these things because you're upset that Ace broke up with you. Uh, I'm, yeah, sorry. Um, uh, I, I, I can handle a breakup. I, what I can't handle is, is, um, you know, I can't handle all the, everything else that I've talked about. I, I, I would never just make a bunch of, make, make, a, make up a bunch of nonsense because, because I broke up with somebody. But the truth is there was never a breakup. People. Ace and I never sat down civilly and had any kind of discussion or breakup. Everyone's wondering, finally, let's just get this out on the table. Ace and I never even broke up. He took me to my birthday place for my, my normal birthday trip. He always takes me to Vegas. He always takes me to Palm Springs on my birthday. I always did. We All I know is 2019 for my birthday. He, You know, we went on my regular birthday trip, and he took me shopping and we hung around and went to Palm Springs. He was cranky and he was on the phone yelling and screaming the entire time. And then when we got back, he went on a, a little tiny tour and wanted me to stay home and said that I needed to rest because when he gets home, we're going to be moving into this other house that was one mansion over. And it was a done deal. And, and Poodle, I just want you to stay home. And then he I knew he already was, you know, t pounding the pills again and doing what he was doing. So I get all these calls that were not right. And he wasn't doing the usual thing that he's done for 12 years. He started not, he started not checking in with me, not letting me know what hotel he was in, making me worry, all that kind of stuff. And I knew who it was. I'm not going to make up that she put it, that she could be with me because, you know, because of a breakup. I'm not going to make anything up. I'm gonna, I don't need to make up lies about, about this. As a matter of fact, I haven't lied at all in my life about anything. How about that? Not, not just saying it out loud, just how about it? I don't lie. I'm not a liar. There's no reason. No, you think it's kind of a slap in the face the way he went out and got a new house and he took you off the album and had his new girlfriend record? Isn't that... It's, 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 yeah, but... It, it's completely, it's, it's super obnoxious, and um, it's it's really really obnoxious. It's also the behavior of a of a of a sixteen year old brat. It's the behavior of just a sixteen year old little child. Like you know, look what I I have my new girlfriend now, and then I broke up with my old one. Uh, and he's got my he's got the gold watch on that I I. I bought him on my birthday with the jackpot money that I won in a casino. I won and immediately went and bought him a gold watch and gave it to him on my birthday when he was being a creep. And um, he didn't wear it around me, but he's always got it on on the interviews. Just he's just do, it's little digs, you know. That's okay, you know. I, I it, you know, karma's gonna come up and, and just bite all of them on the ass real hard and I can guarantee you it's already doing it now one thing that we've discussed is that you actually have recordings uh, of Ace I mean saying some of the things that we I talked do. about in the interviews and so all the yes, people that, that are saying that you, you made it up I mean there's actual proof to this right no I didn't make shit up and there is proof yes See that's what that's what I'm trying to get out to the to the people that are that are naysaying and, and going through and then saying well, these vindictive things. Soon. <clears throat> you know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, let's let them let them let, let everybody bitch slap each other for the you know to find out. Ooh, does she really? You know, is she lying or is she not lying? You know, it's not. 
it's not a mystery, folks. I'm not lying. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sitting around uh, making stuff up about Kiss. I promise you that. No, they're assholes, and it's real. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, I'm just like fantasizing about Gene Simmons putting his hands on me. Right. I don't think so. I don't have time for that. Ace has completely ruined my life. He's 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 caused fraud, forgery using my name, my personal information. He's ruined my credit. He did he he I noticed this this that that he didn't pay he didn't do little things like that he's done for twelve years. Like he, he I, I got a twenty dollar ticket for accidentally running a a stop sign uh, last year. And he said, Oh, don't worry about it. Like he always did. Well, no, you don't worry about those things. You don't worry about those things. No, no, no. John will take care of it. John's going to take care of it. Don't worry about it. And it was kind of a little household joke that there was a picture of me driving my Bentley and with my pigtails. And I ran a red light because I was lost and, and they sent the picture in the mail, but he never paid it. So now I owe thousands and thousands of dollars. I could never, ever pay. And my, you know, everything, my, my, my passport is expired. He always carried my passport. I never carried it ever, 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 ever. And the strange thing is, um, I looked at it today and found out that it was expired and it's been expired since 2017. Since 2017, I have been all over South America and I've been to Japan and all over Australia with him. So he just didn't, he just decided not to just, how did he just not tell me that we needed to fix that? You know, I, he carried it in his jacket at all times because I didn't carry it. I wasn't allowed to have, um, any, carry any of my own money, my own cards for 12, since I met him, I couldn't have a, anything but an iPad, no real computer, no laptop, couldn't look at his. He paid, he just gave me cash for every single solitary thing that I need, like I'm a little child. Which is fine if you, if you, if you, you know, you don't make a woman feel like, you know, she has to explain everything to you or literally be like a child, you know? But that's what he did. Not Ruby. I couldn't possibly, I don't have the money to fix everything now and to update everything and do all this. He just left me with all, with all that. Now, now, see, one thing I want, I want to bring clear for the people that are listening, a lot of people saying that you're just stirring up controversy, you're upset, that you're just trying to get some money out of them, but if you're married to somebody, you get a divorce, there's usually come some kind of a settlement, there's usually some kind of alimony oh, payments. Fucking A. Of course. Sorry for swearing, everybody, but you know what? If you've been through what I've been through, you'd be swearing too, and... um yeah, it's normal. It's what we had was what is a common law marriage. They don't call it common law anymore, but we got, we got, uh, the Marvin Act and Palamody. When you stay with someone and you live together as though you were married for over, you know, what is it, two years or over two years? And, you know, you never leave each other's side and you, and you live together as a married couple. Well, the law treats it that way. So sorry, fellas. Sorry, everybody. Too bad. You know. I mean, that's a huge part of my life. You know, I don't. I'm sorry to interrupt you. He was a gigantic. He was all consuming. He, my life was all consumed by his existence since I met him. So he called me his fiance immediately when I first met him. Publicly, he didn't waste any time. He said, you'll never scrub a pan. You'll never do anything. I I don't ever want you to work. I don't ever. Well, I thought he would help me at least do little creative things that I wanted to do. Nope. Not at all. I'm the rock star in this fucking house. What do you think you're doing? No, you're not going to sing. You're not going to have a job. You're not going to do anything because how are you going to take care of me? How are you going to tour with me, poodle? What am I going to do without my poodle? I won't do it. Yeah. Okay. So it's not like I, so everyone that's out there going, get a job. Are you pounding the pavement? People, it's not like I had, it's not like I, I was allowed to learn a trade. It's not like I was allowed to, I wasn't, I wanted to do, do a, a decorating show, a, a home decor, like a rustic, you know, bohemian home decor show. Nope. I wrote a book, you threw it out. Nothing. I don't, 
I wasn't allowed to pursue what I do, and I'm a singer. I wasn't allowed to do that. The only reason I've got Paper Doll, that album, under my arm is because the first time he relapsed, Kent, I was so freaked out and getting death threats, and he left me at the at the mansion for the, for months. Ken Sharp and Fernando called me and said, "Get up here and let's do an album. Get get out of your head. Get in the car. Drive up. We got these great songs for you to do. It's going to be really fun." And it made me feel better. And I went and did it. And then when he came home, he wanted a piece of it. He said he insisted on he insisted on being on it. He insisted on saying he would put it out to all of us and he would co-produce it well you know that's my what i do you know can what i do matter you know what i mean how about what i do i mean so basically for the last 12 years you were you were ace's caretaker i mean not only were you i was very much the caretaker yeah i was the caretaker the mommy the nurse the poodle the wife the fiance the girlfriend the servant yeah, totally. And that's what I want to try. Fashion consultant as well. <laughs> See, that's one thing I want to try and get out to all the people. It's just, you know, understand that for the, for the last 12 years, you, not only were you in your relationship, you, you did everything for him. And now comes a time, like I, like I said before, when either divorce, there's usually something. I mean, in your case, I, I think there should be something. Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't, you know, people, listen, people love to be cranky. There's, there's, there's so many, so many millions of fans of theirs. And I, you know, I mean, I'm not, a, there's no competition here. I'm a singer. He's a giant rock star. Okay. I never, I don't get competitive. I don't care about any of that stuff. I just expected sometime he would let me do what I do and nurture it. He didn't, unless it had to do with him. So, um. You know, but the thing is, uh, you know, yeah, you've got to, it's, it's got to be a hundred percent on both parts. You know, it can't be a hundred percent on one person's part and 50% on the other person's part. Or, you know, it, it just can't be that way. It's normal that I should, there's a lot of fans. I never expected what I was saying is I never expected, you know, everyone to just love me, you know, and you know, a lot of the fans are going to, there's going to be people, haters out there. There's going to be people that don't like me, people that are want to be mad at me, people that are just going to sit there and have nothing to do but get on their computer and go, well, I don't like her because I don't like what she's said or what she's wearing or I don't like the this and this and this and this and this. And then, But then, you know what? For, for those people, there's always a handful of people that love me, that are kind, that are sweet, that are loving, that would be really, really happy to see me, just hug me at meet and greets and just be... Just be wonderful, you know. And Ace used to love that. He used to say, "My fans really love you." And and he would cry to me and say, "You know, you make me look good, Poodle." And and my fans love you. And I, you know, you're the sweetest woman I've ever known in my life. And it was, you know, I'm a very gracious person to people, to the fans. I always have been. Now, do you read the comments? Do you read the negative things that people are putting out there about you? No, I do. I mean, people tell me, you know, and then, but my really, my really good friends just go, don't read them. You know what I mean? I get it. Like, I'm, you know, I mean, it, it's really a, you know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, nobody likes to hear people being mean to them. I mean, it's, you know, that sucks. Especially when you, nobody knows, see, nobody in this world, except for the, the people that are real close in our life. And nobody was so close that they were with us you know, 24 seven, nobody, you know, um, people of that level of fame don't want people around, you know, they're picky about it when the housekeeper's over and when, how long is she going to stay over and when is she going to split, you know, it, it, Ace doesn't want anyone around. So, um, you know, uh, what was I just saying? Sorry. <laughs> I'm saying a lot. Uh, no, I don't look at, I don't look at the comments. I don't look at the, the shitty comments. Nobody likes people to say bad things about them. It sucks. And uh, it, it was upsetting, of course, for me to to watch the interview with him. And I didn't want to watch it. I just was. Um, you know, I spent so many, so many years with that man. So there's so many memories, so much, you know. Uh, and it was, it just, it was like a slap in my face. It really, like you said, it was just a slap in my face for him to, to, um, to, to know that the man that you were with for that many years, to know there's a deadly virus out there. And to know that that guy that said, 
you got to be safe. You need constant supervision, Poodle, every day since I met him. You know, nothing's going to happen to my, my Poodle. You're going to be with me the rest of your life. I have cards up to, like, right, you know, a week before he left him saying that. So, you know, when that, that man all of a sudden doesn't care if you live or die, all of a sudden does not give a shit that you're out in the pandemic, that you may not have food, that you may not have shelter, and, and that you, and, and doesn't care that, you know, when he, about all the bullying and every, all this, everything he's done and the, and the situation he has put me in and that I may not have food to eat and don't. I mean, it, that sucks. That hurts. That was like punching me in the stomach. And I was upset. My, a good girlfriend of me, of mine called me last night and just went, you know, fuck him. Don't even, don't even look at it. No, now one thing I, I want to uh, talk to you about is that we did that great interview the other day. You, you made a lot of allegations about the other members of Kiss. One of the yeah. things that fans keep on wondering is that, you know, I, they understand there's a beef between you and Ace. You guys broke up, but why the allegations right. about the other members? Again. Stop saying breakup because we never had a breakup. We never had a breakup. We never we never broke up. It was never. He said wait here, and then he came home and ambushed the house. I even have his text going, oh, I can't wait to get there, Poodle. I'm on my way. I can't wait to get in our bed and watch Doris Day movies and, and crack up and everything. And, you know, and he shows up and it was a horrifying experience where I was threatened. But anyway, um, look, about that stuff, I'm, I'm not making it up. Go on. Go on. I'm sorry. No, what I was saying is... Uh what the fans want to know is why the allegations about the other members. Why did you why did you decide to bring those up all now? Well, for one thing, it, it it's for one thing, it all links together. This is a unit. This is a it's a corporation. It's a band. It's a huge, famous corporation and band. And what happened to me is. Um, it's so terrifying that I, you know, you can't, you can't think you're the only woman that's happening to, or you're the only woman that's happened to, you know, when I know what I know, I've told you, I, I already said things, you know, and things that I know that happened, things that I know that, that go on, things that I know about, this all needs to be, um, surfaced, you know, now, as far as homosexuality, why would, on earth would I care about that? I, I, you know, please. That's, I, I don't, I mean, that's, that's, that's ridiculous to say that I care about something like that. I, I, I love, I absolutely love and adore the way that Ace um, was open about homosexuality to me. What I was talking about is um, the horrible things that happened to me that Gene did. And the horrible things that I know of that need to be surfaced, that need to be told. People need to know that these guys are very, very bad. And that they lie. And that and that Paul is, is on fucking drugs. He says he's not, he, he is too. He has been. That's why he's cranky. There's a video of him kicking a fan. Well, you don't kick your fan with your boot, okay? The only re Listen, you take steroids for that long, and Ace told me how long he's been on steroids. Well... You know what? It goes to your brain. It gets you. It makes you really, really cranky and really, really mean. And he's not a nice person. He wasn't nice to me when I when I met him, and he was never nice to me when I was around him. And what Gene did to me? Well, all I'm going to say about that is that happened, and I have to suffer, you know, thinking about it, having nightmares about it all the time, having nightmares about him, and having nightmares about. Ace bullying me, having nightmares about all kinds of everything. I have PTSD and it's horrible, you know. And I, you know, what happens is I get upset and then I and then I just I, I'm telling the truth. I talk. I people need to know because this kind of bullshit needs to stop. Do you ever think about writing a book about all this? I am writing a book about it. I mean, because that's uh, you know, I'm writing a book about it. That's, sure. That's one thing I think, you know, people are definitely going to be interested in. I mean, you know, we've of course. had a lot of traffic over over this interview. And, you know, like I said, there's there's people that are against you. There's people saying that you're lying. There's people saying that these are just what? allegations. And then there's people on the other side that are saying, you know, it's definitely possible. Why? I don't even... 
why is it so um, weird? Is it the first time that we've ever heard about about something horrifying happening in the rock and roll industry? No. The thing that people are shocked about and the thing that's flipping people out is that women and wives and girlfriends are so um, often, you know, bullied and, and harmed and, um, and and they go through what I went through. That, and they're being threatened, you know, the way that, that I was and the way, you know, and they're, they're afraid to come forward. And I'm the only chick that is like coming forward with this, you know, pretty, pretty alarming, but seriously horrific, true, you know, truth, truths that have happened. And it's blowing people's minds because they weren't ready to hear it. They didn't want to hear it. They don't want to know it about their favorite rock and roll stars. You know, if you dig deep and you go there and you look, you're going to find some ugly things that happen in that industry and in the in the entertainment industry. You got to look around, people. It's happening already. I'm not. It's just that I'm surfacing it. It's just that I'm coming forth. I'm not hiding anymore with my unspoken reality. I'm not going to do it. Now, and one thing I want to make clear is that with the allegations that you put out, you do say you have recordings of, of some of the stuff. Yeah, I have recordings. I, I, whatever I said is true. I don't, I'm not lying about any of it. Listen, I got a lawyer. They're going to come out. You know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, like I said, I just wanted you to have a, opportunity to go ahead and, and, you know, clarify some of these things and, and defend yourself. What the hell am I defending myself? I, it's like all this, all this horrible stuff happens to me, right? And I got it, I got it, and, and all of a sudden they're going, we're going after her. She, these are, you know, we're, we're going to do this and this and this. Why? Over the truth? Over what you guys did? What are you talking about? So Kiss is going to come after me and say, she's making it up. We did not do those things. Oh, okay. All right. Well, if you want to do that, then how about it? Come, come at me, guys, and tell me all about how none of it ever happened and, 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 and you know, I just made all of that up. Gene, you know exactly what you did to me. You know exactly what you did to me, pal. No. I'm not putting up with it. I'm not going to be silenced. No way. No way. Now, at the beginning of this, you said that you're actually pursuing them legally. I have, I, yeah, I have attorneys. I don't want to talk too much about that, you know. Well, obviously, yeah, you know, something. But you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's stuff you can't disclose until, uh, you know, the time. Nope comes nope. obviously right but i mean it looks like you yeah. I, I gotta eat i gotta live i was with the guy and he completely was all consuming for that many years i mean come on how is your living situation going right now since we spoke i was thrown out of out of my house um and that i was living in and I'm going, I'm talking to a lot of people that, you know, trying to help me with everything. And, uh, it's really terrible what I, what I've been through and everything that I've had to endure and, and put up with in Harbor. It's, it's made me a complete, you know, nervous wreck. It's very hard to sleep. It's very hard to eat. Um, I was trying to eat this morning in this hotel room and, and my rabbi's sweet enough to get me a couple extra nights and I was trying to eat something this morning, and this never happened to me in my life. I was just taking little bites of food, and I was, like, getting the hiccups, like my body wasn't accepting the food. It's never happened to me in my life. I mean, it's hard, for, you know, it's, it's it, you know, it's like if something bad's happened to me, and they're punishing me for it. It's just like after Gene did what he did, and I cried to Ace and told him what happened. I was told to shut up and kiss and kiss Jean Vass in case because of the reunion possibility, the money, and the fact that we had the tour with him, and that I better shut up and kiss his ass. And I was I was not just told to shut up, but I was punished over it. 
he only let, he only made that that viral statement months later. That, you know that my gloves are off because he was sitting there and he read something derogatory that Gene said about him in the press, and so he just all of a sudden you know started getting really angry and huffing and puffing and throwing and stuff and saying motherfucker. And then he grabs me and says, now tell me what Gene did. Oh, okay, so you only care about what Gene did to me when it's affecting you. People read about narcissism. I'm still learning about it. But, you know, it applies. Now, I mean, some of the stuff that we talked about, you already came back with facts. I mean, when you go on your social media page, when you're talking about getting thrown out of your house, you, you said there was countless amount of police. I mean... You, you put pictures up. You put video up of actually of it that. It was horrifying for me. It was absolutely horrifying. I mean, you know, yeah, I wake up and there's police surrounding my bed. I'm in dispose. I'm in the bed and they're saying you got two minutes to get out of here. You don't live here anymore. What? Oh, what? Because I owe rent. They didn't show any any, any official papers. That's Nazi Germany style. They don't do that here. This is, they don't do that in, this, in my country. This is my country. They don't do that here. It was completely illegal. Totally illegal. No, I mean, the fashion that I was asked to, you know, they, first of all, they got to take you to court. They got to do this. They got to go through a process, which they did not go through with me. I mean, there, there was a lot of police officers from the pictures that I've seen in, in your home. It's horrifying to wake up to. And I, furthermore, I'm already stressed. I'm already worried. I know I owe, I owe rent. You know, I'm already worried about it. And COVID's going on and everything. Now, now, since doing the interview the other night has... And my grandfather's dying. I'm sorry, but, you know. Since, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, thank you. Since doing the interview the other night, has uh, anybody from Ace's camp or Kiss's camp reached out to you to tell you to uh, to cut it out, to stop saying these things, or want? Not at all. Not at all. Um, first of all, Ace just called me, like I said, like three weeks ago, which is real weird, you know. Before that thing happened, he calls me all, all of a sudden. I haven't talked to him in months, and I'm going through what I'm going through. I have no money. I have his bills coming to me. It, things that don't make any sense that he's left me with. And, uh, you know, I'm going through quite enough. And um, he doesn't call to say he's going to help or anything. I pick up my phone. I'm sitting there, and it says Ace. And I'm like, what? You know, he called me off guard. I answer the, the phone, and he goes, Pluto. And I said, hi. And he said, how you doing? And I went, how am I doing? Exactly. Here's what I said. I said, how am I doing? How am I doing? He goes, yeah, how you doing? And I just was, ex I was telling him this, 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 and this. And he goes, well, I'm, he goes, I'm in California. I told you that our old, our old, um, uh, realtor told me that he never even left, that he's living in Rancho Santa Fe. They don't want to be, they don't want their name dropped. They don't want to be part of it, but they, they absolutely told me with, without a doubt he's living in Rancho Santa Fe. So that means he just bullied me out of the house and moved to a different one and stayed and then moved her in. I don't know what, you know, kind of nonsense. But he said, three weeks ago, he said, I'm in California. I'm in Newport Beach. I said, what are you doing? He goes, I'm at my, I'm at my daughter. She, she moved to the East Coast. I said, where's the, where's the, where's the bodybuilder? And he goes, she's 3,000 fucking miles away. I said, okay. Uh, and he goes, I'm just calling. He goes, because... Uh, I still have feelings for you, and I would like you to take me to dinner. And I said something, and then he goes, never mind, it's just going to be an argument. You know? And then I said, why are you doing this to me? Pretty calmly, I said, why are you doing this to me? Why are you, why are you torturing me? Why are you doing this to me? I can't remember what I said. I said, why are you doing this to me? He said, you're doing it to yourself. You should have never put a restraining order on me. Well, you know, you put a restraining order on someone when they're when they're violent and when they relapse on drugs and they're a maniac. If you can't control it and you're a little woman and this is a big giant dude, you've got to get a restraining order on him. It's just that he's been he's been allowed to swing guns around, throw things at people, hurt people, do whatever the hell he wanted, call out, you know, kids on people. But the minute 
that one day one woman doesn't put up with it and call mm-hmm. and, and and gets a restraining order, you know, that's it. You've done the in, the unspeakable. You you know what I did? You know what the unspeakable is? I took away his power when I did that. I took away his power. I took away the narcissist power. That's what I did. Well, I mean, it, it sounds like, uh, you know, you're definitely frustrated. I, I can't blame you on that. And it, it sounds like you, you two have a lot to work out between you guys. Well, here's the deal. Um, you know, it's, I didn't, I never did anything wrong except for take his hand and say, listen, I'm, he said, before I went with, he, he called me, talked to me, begged me to come be with him. And we were already falling for each other before I went up to LA. But when I, when I first decided, okay, I'm going to pack some stuff. I'm going to go up there and I'm going to, I'm going to see if this plays out. I'm going to see if this works out. I'm going to go get to know Ace. The first thing I said was, he said, you want to take the ride? You know? And I said, sure. Yeah. And I told him, I said, you know what? Cause he always says, I don't, I can't be alone. I'm alone. I'm alone. I'm alone. I'm alone. I don't want to be alone. He'd call me crying and crying and crying. My friend would hear it. Middle of the night, middle of the day, crying. I'm alone. Where's, where is everybody? So the first thing I said is, you know, no matter what happens, you will never be alone again. That's the kind of person I am. I said, I will hold your hand for the rest of your life. And when we fell in love, and we're laying in the bed in, in the bed at, at the Hampton Inn in L.A. And we fell in love with each other. That's the that's I said it again. It was reassurance from me. I just said, I love you, and I'm going to hold your hand the rest of your life. And he said, nobody's ever said that to me. It's the sweetest thing anyone's ever said. And but I meant it. I meant it. See, I don't, I don't lie, and I don't cheat, and I don't um, treat people bad, and I don't. I don't, um, I keep my promises. If I say I'm going to do something for somebody or help somebody, I do it. It's easy for me to be a good person in life. I've always been one since I was two years old. It's really easy for me to be kind and loving and loyal and nice. You know, you know I mean, everybody knows it takes a lot more, more effort to be a jerk than it does to be a kind person. See, what I, what I think here is that, you know, you went out with somebody super famous. People break up all the time. People get left all the time, separated all the time. And in those cases, you don't hear about it every day because it's, you know, Joe Schmo. I mean, I'm sure it happens thousands of times a day. And yeah, but not quite as organized as the strange, you know, way that he abandoned me. All of a sudden, all the bills started coming to me. All of a sudden, nothing of mine was um, up to date. All of a sudden, I had no money to eat. All of a sudden, slowly, I was really realizing that he was right. When he called me, when after I put the restraining order on him, he called me and he said, you know what? He said, things are going to start being really difficult for you in your life now. And that is what he did. And that doesn't happen every day. Well, see what what I'm getting. What I was getting at with my statement was that you know, in those situations, people motherfuck each other to anyone that'll listen. I mean, it just happens that you know, this is bigger than most people. So that's why you are saying some of the things that you're saying, and he's saying some of the things that he's saying. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, of course, you're you're you know you're right. But the thing is. Uh, what people don't understand is, 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 uh, yeah, people screw each other all the time. But it's different in the industry. It's a, the thing that makes it different. Look, it's never nice for people to fuck each other over. It's never nice to do that. Okay. But when men, when you're bullied by men that are very famous in the industry, you, I mean, you really, it's a, it's a different thing. It's a different kind of frightening because you're in a life that's not only all consuming, but you're in a, you're in a life and a house and a world where you've got nobody to talk to except for the people that he knows that he hired that are on the payroll, the people, yes, people, the people that are around him. And they're telling you that you're their family. They love you like family. Okay. You get, you got them now. But as soon as that person turns their back on you, they all do. You are then, 
you know, like blacklisted or something. You're like, you're like all of a sudden you're the plague and you didn't do anything but love all of them. You asked me if anyone reached out to me earlier. Um, no. And I have reached out. I have reached out and, and called John, our, our personal assistant that we had forever, uh, who always said, Rach, you're like a sister to me. Rach, we're like family, all that stuff. I reached out to one of our bodyguards, um, who was a good guy, you know, Jim Crowley, who I, who was like family to me. Uh, these people are ignoring me now. Nothing. It's zilt. Zilch. I just talked to John for a second the other day because I happened to call him all of a sudden from the hotel phone. He answered and he's like, Oh, Hey Rach, Hey Rach, Hey Rach. And I said, John, do you realize that there is a, there is a, a deadly virus? Do you realize I have no food? John, I am in a hotel with no money and no food. Is this what Ace wants? I, I said that to him. I said, is this what he wants? And John goes, no, no, no. Rach, I, I, just like I saw him yesterday. He said, no, Rach, I'm sure this isn't what, what Ace wants. Of course it's not. No, I'm sure it's not what he wants. And then he goes, listen, I got to go. I'm doing some stuff. Um, call me a little bit. Okay. Well, he didn't answer and he didn't call me back. So that's what's happening. Now, for, for the people that are, are that are saying things online, I mean, the, the, you say that you you made these allegations. You say you have more you have more to tell. You're saying that you have recordings of Ace. What do you say to the people that are saying that you're just holding this over their heads right now? Well, you know, the people that are saying that just want me to hurry up and come out with it. The people that are saying, "Well, yeah, she probably doesn't," you know. That's like a that's like a little kid thing going. Yeah, sure you will. You know, of course. You know, look when I say I'm coming out with it, I'm coming out with it. When I say I do have proof, I do have proof. Um, you know, I, I I don't know what to tell you about what Gene did to me, except for he did it. He did do it, and that's a fact. I have no reason to lie about this stuff. Why would I just make things up? I, I you know about them. I don't. Where's it? I, I, you know, look, it happened. And it happens a lot, and it needs to stop. A lot of this ugliness needs to stop happening in the in the industry, um, and it needs to stop now to women and men. It it goes on. It happens. It's like if I would have came out about about anybody else about a producer, nobody would be shocked, nobody would be surprised. But it's their. I get it. It's it's their favorite band. It's their heroes. It's the people they dressed up like when they were kids. Hey, I understand. I get that. You don't want to believe it. You don't want to believe that. But, you know, it's true. Believe it. Know it. Listen. Watch uh, watch one of those those surveillance camera videos of Ace. Listen to what he's saying. Just so very, very matter-of-factly he says that. Well, that's what I, that's the man I lived with since 2008. Was he, could he be fun? Could it be funny? Could he be charming? Could it be exciting and good? Of course, it was all of that. It could also be very, very terrorizing. It was also frightening a lot and felt, you know, uh, unsure. And uh, and it was, it was scary, you know? Now, you, you know, you, just, yes, huh? you've mentioned that you've, uh, you've reached out to some high-level musicians that, to try and help you out. Do you think that these people are shying away because they're afraid of? Of course. Yeah, of course. I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't just expect anybody to, I know how it works, you know? I know how it works. I don't, you know, they do shows together, they do concerts together, they might have a thing together that they're doing, they don't want to, you know, I get it. I know how that is. But I'm still, you know, when I have nobody to turn to, nobody to ask, nobody to go to, I have to say to myself, I have to swallow my pride and just go, you know what? Um, ask and see if they will. Ask and see if they'll help. Maybe somebody will help. You know what I mean? Right. You don't know this is ever going to happen to you. I mean, I was told every day of my life and every night of my life, Poodle, you know what? He would, he would, um, he would do something nice for me and then he would, he would hug me and he would cry and he would say, you know, I, I, I know that a lot of the time, you know, I know you didn't grow up with money and I know a lot of the time it seems like this isn't real. It seems like a fairy tale. It's not real, but, and he would cry and he would say, but poodle, it is real. It is real. And I mean it. And I mean everything I say. And it's, 
you know, you're never going to have to want for anything. And I don't ever want you to worry, Poodle. The thing I don't want is I don't ever want you to worry about anything. I'm always going to take care of you. Always. Well, and I have plenty of cards. Because he always had cards around the house. That's what he does. He always has cards. And then, you know, when you do something or if he's if he was mean or you got in a fight or anything like that, he goes into the room, wherever it is, and he gets a card. He makes a card out to you. And then he comes and he puts his lower lip down and he gives you the card. You know, when he cries, then you, and you forgive him. And that's how, that's how he is. Well, but look at what's happening to me now. Every, you know, anything that could happen is happening. I have nobody to turn to. And I mean, my life is just completely like, you know, getting like it's out of control. You know, I've just lost everything and, and have no assets, no money, not a cent. Now, let me ask you this. Let's say, hypothetically, Ace calls you tomorrow. He says he wants to put everything aside. I'm willing to give you X amount of dollars now, and I'll give you such and such amount per month, you know, from here until whenever. You know, you get married, or I don't know how that works. Would you ever bring up Kiss again? Um, That is all, everything you said, my friend, and you are my friend, is... It's legal. That's all legalities, you know. And uh, but that is, you know, between what I would do and say with Ace. As far as what I have come out with, what Gene did to me, as far as that goes, I am not going to hide that reality. I'm not going to hide anything. That happened to me, and everything I said is true. I'm not going to. Um, no, I, I mean. It's, it's legal what I would, how I would answer that, what I would do, how I'd react, you know, if he said this, 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 or offered this, or this, or this. But that's not going to make everything that happened go away. It's not going to make me turn around and, 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 and go, oh, yeah, I didn't mean it, everyone. I didn't even mean it. You know, I'm not going to, no, you know. I mean, when Lisa Remedy came out with the Scientology stuff, Nobody was coming out with it. She came out and she surfaced a lot of really horrifying stuff that blew everybody's mind. Everybody was like, what? What's going on upstairs on Hollywood Boulevard at the Scientology Church? What? You know? No, everybody was doing that. Well, come to find out it's real. Come to find out it's true. There's always going to be one. There's got to be one brave person that comes out and surfaces it, you know, and says it. No, let me ask you this. I mean, I could totally understand the issues with Ace. A hundred percent understand your issues with Gene, with the you know the allegations of the things that he's done to you. Mm-hmm. What's your beef with Paul? My beef with Paul is is no. You know what? For one, I really, really don't dig him coming down so hard on everybody else. And it's been constant. When he calls and he's on speakerphone right right across from me, right in front of me, talking to Ace, talking about uh, pounding pain pills like they're candy. And another beef that I have with Paul is that he threatened my life with Gene. That's a kind of a big beef there. The fact that twice Ace told me, Paul... At Paul's house, they had a meeting, and Paul and Jean, not just Jean, Paul and Jean, leaned over and said, you know, what they said. She's interfering with business. We know she has lawyers. Get rid of her. Get rid of her now. Okay, well, that kind of makes me cranky. That's threatening my life, isn't it? That's threatening my life. Well, yeah, I mean. You know? Yeah, I can and as far as far as what I said about what Paul did and what went on, that's because I'm talking about what went on. I'm surfacing proofs. Sorry, that's just how it is. Now, when they when you say they say get rid of her, I mean, do you think he just meant like break up with you? No, because he told me flat out. I said, "What do you mean?" Get, I said, "What do you? What did they mean by that?" I was like standing up, going, "And you." You know, you just what you do? You just walked out. What are they talking about? He goes, they want me to completely get rid of you. 
they, they want me to hurt my poodle. And he had his hands and he said, I don't want to hurt my poodle. And I was like, well, no shit. That's all you're saying? I mean, you know, like you just flop over for them when they say that. And then the, the other time he said, he said flat out that Gene was going to have me whacked. That Paul and Gene, that Gene, that Paul, Paul, Gene, Gene, Paul, Gene, Paul, and Doc, that they're going to have me whacked. You know, I don't need to, I don't need that. I've had my life threatened by his friend Buddy, too. And by, by the, the Turritolas from his ex. I don't need it. Nobody's going to threaten my life and I'm just going to shut up and go in the corner. Sorry, everyone, you know, they, they grew up differently than me. You know, they grew up on the East Coast. They, you know, it's fine. Out here, when someone does that to you, when you're raped, when you're threatened, when you're harmed, when someone says they're going to kill you or slit your throat and they're, or they shove their finger in your vagina, out here, you know what you do? You tell. Out here, you, when you, you, you grow up when you're a little kid knowing that's wrong, you get a grown up. Or you call the police. You know, I'm a woman that's doing what I was raised to believe that you do. Now, what, one thing I got to ask you, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to want me to ask this question. Why did you wait so long? I mean, why now instead of when all this was going on? Because the bullying came uh, that's a good question and i and i'm it's yeah i'm sure everyone does want to know that um because i had enough I'd, i i had i'd had quite enough you know it's like you he's already done all these things to me and and every time i turn my head there's another bill for thousands of dollars coming in that i've got to take care of every time i turn around this is due this is due this is due i can't i have no money for food i have no money to eat he's posing in las vegas with somebody uh, in our favorite spot where we took every picture like an eight-year-old you know he's acting and and I, you know, I start getting bullied by the landlord because I can't pay. It just starts getting worse and worse and scarier. Then he calls and said, you did it to yourself. It's just, it's just like, how, you know, I, I'd had enough. As soon as, you know, I wake up and there's police in my house with no paperwork, no official paperwork telling me you got two minutes to get out of your house after everything and all the bullying that's happened to me and threatening that, you know, every, all, everything that I've been through. And I'm sitting back in a Hampton Inn where I met Ace. I met him at, at, you know, not where I met him, but where I met him, met him, where we fell in love. And only I'm sitting here with um, nothing, you know, and no way to get out of this corner he has put me in. I've had enough. It's just like anybody else. It's just like anybody else. Anybody, you push the woman or or the, the hurt child or, you know, when whoever's, you push the person in the corner and hurt them and harm them and hurt them and threaten them long enough. And they're going to, they're going to snap. They're going to come out and they're going to say, hey, I, fuck you. I'm not going to take this anymore. You know? Oh, uh, yeah. hundred percent. So that's my best answer for that for everybody. You know, I mean... I, I've been pushed, threatened, uh, silenced, uh, and and harbored all this. Harbored what Gene did to me. Harbored it like a like a like when I was in our big house and Ace was telling me shut up and kiss his ass and you better be nice to him and this and this. He can go to prison. And I I was like throwing up and Ace just should have been like wiping my head with a cool cloth and said he was staring at me, telling me to shut up and scolding me. Well, that sucks. You know I don't. I just wasn't going to, I'm just, I, I just decided I'm not harboring this shit anymore. No. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I understand a hundred percent. See, one thing I want to say is, you know, I mean, I, I, I've spoken with you several times. I enjoy our conversations. I don't know. Thank you. Thanks. I, I don't know Ace. I don't know the rest of Kiss. Do I listen to their music? Sure. Have I gone to their concerts? A hundred percent. Do I, you know? It's show business. You know, they're, they're, it's Kiss. They were a good band. I don't have anything against that. But as people and what they did to me and what I've been through, I, I gotta say it. I mean, you know, I mean, for, for those that are listening, for those that are seeing you sticking up for your side of the story, I mean, Ace just did an interview just, I think it was yesterday, where he's, you know, 
You're on the street. You're kicked out. You have nowhere to go. He's gloating about his new girlfriend, a 6,000 square foot house, how he's gotten 12 guitars just delivered to his house. He traded some a guitar. I didn't really listen to the interview all the way, but something about he just got a new, uh, well, 2015 Mercedes or something like that. I, I, I don't know. He got a new car. I, I don't know if he traded a guitar for the guitar. Uh, traded the guitar for the he car. Do that. He just bought it. Look, he, he, he'll piss through so much money in Vegas just in a day or in a night. I mean, look, he just doesn't want to give it to me. He's just be he's a little, a little child who got mad and said, you shouldn't have put a restraining order on me, poodle. Why'd you do that? You know, okay. And, and he knows he was mean. He knows he treated me like that. And, and, and I did a big no, no. I went forward. I told. You know, we'll see what I'm saying. He's gonna he's gonna do an interview and go, ha ha! I have I can eat and I have shelter and I have a new girlfriend. She's suffering. You know. Well, I'm, what I was getting at is, I mean, he even mentioned it in in that interview. I mean, it's it's definitely you know throwing things in your face. I'm pretty sure he knew you were going to listen to it, even if you were at that second. He knew someone was going to send it to you where you where you heard it. It was it a was message. Really, really rude when he when he said that that I don't deserve it for my name to be brought up. Oh really? Okay. I don't deserve it after everything I did, after after catering to him, loving him and everything I did. I mean just, you know, standing at attention when I was called to duty. You know what I mean? Right. For so long. Telling him it's it's, it's okay, come on, you know, when he was tired, come on. Getting, I'm just a little, I'm five, five, and I was getting him, and I was like, come on, let's get in the bath, come on, let's get, oh, let's get out. When I say I powdered his balls, I'm telling you that I powdered his balls. I really, truly did. I, I took him out of the shower or out of the bath, I put baby powder on him, and I literally powdered him. Like a little kid, put, and said, let's get in your jammies every night of his life, and put him in the bed. Let's watch movies, okay, come on. Like, I was the caretaker, for real, and the girlfriend, and the, everything. You see, one thing. One thing I want to bring up one more time is, you know, yes. people got to understand that are listening to this. People break up all the time. People are, aren't in relationships forever. You're, you know, one of those people, and it just so happens that you're upset and you're speaking. You're speaking out about it. You know, I mean, you were left high, well, high and dry. Pretty bad, some pretty gnarly things. Some pretty horrible things happened to me that I'm speaking out about. You know, that are that are not good. And I've witnessed some things that are bad, and I'm coming out with it for not just my sake, for other people's sake too. Right. So I want people to know that I'm coming out also for for other women that have to go through this. I can't, you know, like I'm the only woman and the only woman that's ever been, you know, harmed in this in the in that in the industry. You know, I'm not. I'm coming out for other people that. I've got a lot of letters from other women and stuff that are, you know, they're freaked out. They don't feel very comfortable that I'm going forward with it, but they're they're happy I am, you know? Well, once again, I want to bring up that you have the Lady Space and Ace. See what's there. Ladyspaceandace.com. Oh, thanks. Thanks for pointing that for me. Definitely. I mean, you know, they're... Regardless of everything, you know, if you're a Kiss fan, how you feel about either party in this situation, there's amazing memorabilia. I mean, you know, if you want to go ahead and stop by there and help Rachel out and get some items, do it. Even if you don't like Rachel and you like Kiss, go there anyway and get that stuff, you know? Thanks so much for that. No, I'm th thank you for taking the time. And speaking with me one more time, you know, I, I enjoy our conversation. You, you cleared a lot of. You. I like you. I, I, I do. You cleared a lot of things up today, you know, and you know, for everyone that was talking all the shit, going against you, and questioning things or that, you you really cleared a lot of stuff up tonight. Well, I hope so. I mean, it's it's frustrating to have to, you know, not not you're not bothering me, of course, but I mean, it's frustrating to keep going over it. But I I understand. That the fans are that there's a lot of people in this world that don't understand that a lot of things go on. There's a lot of people in this world that just go, they don't, you know, 
when they hear about that, they don't want to believe it. They don't, you know, I understand that they don't, but it, see, I'm not the only person that bad things happen to. And, and that has to stop the bullies of the world, you know, and the powerful men that do these kinds of things have to stop it. You know, we well, you know what it is. I mean, I, I usually never go back to an interview so quickly after I've spoken with somebody, but in this case, I, I needed the opportunity for all the people that were, for saying that, you know, these allegations are nothing but slander. They're, they're nothing but just you making trouble, you know, that I give you your, your, your voice, your, your chance to, to speak out and to, to answer all those people that are out there. Right now? No, no, you, no, you, you did during this yeah, conversation. Yeah, interview, yes, it was really kind of you. I need to, and I, it, it, you know, yeah, so there's not just one, one interview just freaking everyone out, and then, and then they don't hear from me, you know, I appreciate that, it kind of didn't need to, it did need to, you know, I did need to talk some more, I guess. Yeah, but that. I understand that people don't want to, if people don't understand it, but, you know, you got to open your eyes, you've got to be aware of things be aware of things people just be aware that there's you know it's it's like a these men of power okay are, it's pretty frightening it definitely is i mean you know it is in all aspects you know I, i'm glad that you're you're doing what you can to get to rise above you know i mean I, i'm wishing you the, the best of luck on things i, I hope everything turns around you I mean you you don't deserve to be living in a hotel, Re regardless what anybody can say, you know, yeah, I mean, it's, you're it's a person. Virus going on. It's really, really frightening for me. It's really scary for me. And how can the, someone who was with me that many years, and how can his partners, how can the people around him, how can none of them give a shit that I don't have any food? These people that were like saying, we love you like family. What is going on? Does he not care? What if I get the virus? Is he going to care then? I mean, what's going on? I wouldn't treat anybody like this. I wouldn't even treat someone I didn't even know or so. First of all, you know, I mean, I can't, I mean, I wouldn't treat anyone like this. Anybody. I mean, you know, you think of it, it's a scary situation all the way around. When you're in California, the, the state's burning down. There's riots everywhere. There's, there's a. Fires and riots. I'm a little a woman. What? He just doesn't care. All of a sudden, if I if I live or die or eat or anything, the man that said, you know, you're, I'm always going to take care of you. Don't worry about anything ever. You're always going to get taken care of. I'm not supposed to. I just don't get any supper now. I just don't, I have to go sit in the corner. You know, uh, the, the reason that he said, you know, I'm not going to bring out my ex girlfriend's name because she doesn't deserve it is because you know what? I'm not behaving like a tra like the, the the trained poodle. The trained little, you know, dog. I, I didn't behave. I have a text that he sent me um, a while ago saying, if you're going to act like a child, you must be treated like one. Wow. So he's, he is, what he's doing is he is punishing. He's punishing me, you know, and it's, you know, like you're, you're going to starve. See how you like it, you know? See, I mean, that, that truly is terrible, you know. Like, like I said, I mean, for everyone out there listening, you realize you, Rachel's a person, you know. I mean, I understand you may love Kiss, you may love Ace, but, you know, Rachel's a human being. I mean, no one deserves to be treated like that. Thank you. You know, in any situation else, if there's a divorce, there's a, a, a separation. There's, there's always some kind of something, you know. I mean, you never had a bank account. You never had. I'm never ever allowed to have anything that was just mine, you know. I mean, so if those listening, yeah, I, I imagine. An account, but I couldn't have the card. I wasn't allowed to carry, um, have my own money or my own card. You know, never. So it's basically imagine living in a, a, a different lifestyle, you know, than most people are used to. And then not having your own funds during that time, not making your own money. You know, yes, you did take care of him personally on every level. And he took care yeah, of you. That was my job. Everyone's like, well, what'd you do? You know, like I'm just this little princess. That's, that was my job. And I need to get paid for the job that I did. And I should be allowed to have 
a little house myself, you know, and live. Not be in a hotel during a deadly pandemic. What kind of, who treats someone like that? I mean, even, even when jobs end, there's always, you know, there, there's a severance. I did quite a job. I did, I did, the job I did, my girlfriends couldn't even, they were just like, wow, um, you know what, I did more, more power to you, Rachel, you're a better woman than I, I couldn't do it, there's no way I could do it, I could not do that, I couldn't do what you do. And, it, you know, I mean, I carried it out, you know. I didn't give up. I was a trooper. And I did it. And I deserve to, to have a roof over my head during a pandemic. It's just, you know, it's freaking me out. It's just, it's just, who treats somebody like this? I'm sorry to break down, but who treats somebody like this? You know, I have no, it's so scary. I have no one to walk, to go to or call or if something happens or if, if I'm harmed or anything like that, there's no one in, anymore that, that gives a fuck that can, that's going to help. Why are these people this monstrous? You know? Right. Yeah, I mean, it, it's truly terrible. I mean, then you're in a situation where when, when people do break up, you know, the friends choose sides usually in some situation, but when it's someone powerful, I think everyone chooses the powerful side, unfortunately. Well, it doesn't always happen. It's like most, you know, most people, not, you know, I mean, in the rock industry or in the entertainment industry, you know, they're going to, they're going to make sure that the woman's taken care of, even if they were with her for, you know, a couple of years, you know, no, you, you hardly ever hear like, something this horrible. You never do. Come on. They're, they're going to, they're going to make sure that she's, you know, that she's housed. This is animalistic the way he's treating me. It's like, it's, it's horrible. I wake up if people, I wake up five times a night. I wake up sometimes at six in the morning, like I did this morning, just, just like I was just shaking and I couldn't help myself. And I thought to myself, you know what? If, if I get the virus or anything happens to me, there's nobody to help. There's no, there's nothing that can, all the promises he made it, for everything I did. And, and he always thanked me and said, because you've done so much for me and because you, 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 you know, been with me for so many years, I, I, you know, he said it after being with him for three years. He said, I'm, I'm going to make sure and, and we're going to make some of your dreams come true and stuff. He never, ever, ever followed through with that at all. Now, you know, one thing you, you said, uh, he, he writes a lot of cards to you in situations. The cards, yeah. Do you have anything like that in writing from him? Yes. I have so many cards saying we're going to be together forever and all this stuff. I have the cards, like, right before he left. I sent some to him, just going, what ha what's this? Remember how you said this? What's going on? I have no food. There's no food. I have no I don't, you know, what am I supposed to do? Pound the pavement? There's, there, be a waitress while there's a, you know, a deadly pandemic? I don't understand. I was at his beck and call for 12 years. It wasn't just, you know, the, the, the fabulous, you know, you know, be, be, being whisked from country to country. No, it wasn't like that at all. It, you know, I had to stand at attention. And I did. I did. I did it. I, I deserve to have some sort of home. This is not right. No, I mean, you know, like you, like you said, I mean, you're you're in the middle of a pandemic. You mentioned earlier, you don't have any trades or anything like that. You know, I mean, what? Yeah, it's not like you said, well, let's not. And, and, and what you should probably take some night classes, or you should probably do this and that, because I'm going to leave your ass home pretty soon, and I'm just going to do it. You know, you never, he didn't prepare me for this. He didn't just walk out on someone after that many years and go, yeah, I guess you have to eat shit now, you know? No. No. I mean, what do you think, you know, for the people that are out there saying, oh, go become a waitress, do that? I mean, well, I, 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 you know, let them say it. They don't understand. I, I, don't, I don't know how it works in California, uh, where I'm from. It's really gnarly right now. That's what I was going to say, where I'm from, uh, Restaurants only like at twenty percent capacity, 
And how are, you know, I mean. They're closed here. It's like they're not. It's a lot. A lot of the jobs that people say you could just go out and get aren't uh, there. You know, I mean, you're, you're, the unemployment rate is crazy right now. Yeah, and so it's not nice to treat someone like an animal. And it's not nice to anyway, COVID or not, but the COVID is making it very frightening for me. Yeah, it's got to be a, a petrifying thing. I mean, you know, especially. It's totally petrifying. I don't even have my own bed to go get in right now. That's what I'm sa- That's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, most people are in their homes. They're protected. They're wearing their masks. You're, you're going. No, in, I'm you, scared to death in the night. You're in a public place. You're in a hotel. Who knows if the person be, who was there yeah, two days ago. After 12 years of, of everything I did, I, I just, hey, have anybody, have a stranger, have your rabbi, have somebody get you a hotel and beat it. Just take off, you know? Really? No. Yeah, it's, How can he treat me like this? It's, 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 he's treating me like, I don't know. I've never known anybody that was this cruel, ever. I haven't ever known it. I don't know it. I wouldn't do it, and I don't know anybody that, I've never known anyone that would do this. No, nah, I mean, you know, like I said, usually in situations there's some kind of a, there's some kind of a net for you to fall back on. I mean, there was, there's, there was nothing there for you. No. Nope. And it truly is terrible, regardless of everything. Well, thank you for caring about it. And, well, I'm going to go try to lay down right now on the bed. Well, I thank you for uh, clearing everything up. Letting all this interview right here was for all the naysayers, for all the people there wanting to take the time and write those shitty little comments out there. You know, I wanted you to have a chance to to answer all those people out there and say, you know, this is what's this is why this is what happened. Well, thank you, I appreciate it. And one more time, it is ladyspaceandace.com. dot com. Go ahead, do what you can, buy some great memorabilia, put some money in Rachel's pocket. And uh, there is a uh, a fundraiser out there to uh, to help Rachel get a hotel, get some food. Uh, you can look that up at Rachel Gordon on on Facebook, and you'll you'll get the links to all that. All right, Rachel, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate everything, and uh, I look forward to the next time we speak again. Okay, me too. You have a good night. You and t- bye, everybody. Take care. Okay. Bye.